Selecting for just one trait can be ruinous in the cow-calf business, but it depends on how that one trait is related to others and how well you keep the others balanced. An Iowa State University research herd shows it can work out well. We decided to single trait select because the industry doesn't do that. And someone needs to learn uh, to find out, you know, what happens when you do that. We wanted to see, you know, what the progress would be for selecting for uh, marbling over that time period and, and also what some of the negative implications might be. And so this is kind of a, the, the retrospect in, in that regard. At Iowa State's McNay Research Farm near Cheridan, Iowa, in 1996, Foundation Angus heifers were selected for marbling or intramuscular fat. Ultrasound at the start gave way to expected progeny differences, or EPDs, from the American Angus Association. And then over a period of time, it still was a selection for intramuscular fat, but using mostly the marbling EPD from the Angus breed uh, to do the selection. So they've been selected for marbling for 20 years. Loy recently led an analysis of the genetic and phenotypic results of that selection program and co-authored a research paper for the certified Angus beef brand. If you're concerned about selecting for carcass traits or or cattle that will do well in the feedlot uh, because it may have negative effects on the reproduction in your cow herd or negative effects on on your bull buyers that are looking for you know heifer bulls or bulls that that would be more maternal um, the, I, I think we've kind of eased some of the fears there. I think there's a poss you know, the, you can select for high quality, for marbling, and the traits that consumers want currently, and still have a functional, effective cow herd. How this Iowa herd compares to the rest of the country's Angus across all other traits is mostly average, except when it comes to marbling. This herd, the, the average carcass data, just to put it in perspective, the, the quality of this herd is uh, in, in the last couple of years, they've averaged about 57% prime, between 50 and 60% prime. They run virtually 100% choice, 97, 98% choice. And I believe there are 90% uh, would be certified Angus beef for average choice and higher. So you know, that's kind of where, you know, if you select for marbling for 20 years, that's um, that's where you can be, and with where we're at currently in the, we were much lower in the Angus breed when we started. So you've got a head start if you're looking at doing this uh, as a breeder today. With the long-term focus on marbling in the herd, carcass quality is well past choice and on to mostly prime. That's a bit of a reset in the way most research projects have been written. I work, do a lot of work with cattle feeders. We may evaluate whether a technology was negatively affecting carcass quality by its effect on percent choice. But in this case, uh, they're 100% choice, so prime is the new choice. And, and I think as we increase quality of cattle and we start looking at demands of consumers and look at where we're at and where we're heading as an industry, um, you know, I think we've moved the goalposts in the beef industry. Basically, if we're shooting for low choice, we're, we're B students. And so we, as a beef industry, I think we want to be the A students. As the market rewards those higher grades, ranchers can rest easy that producing better beef won't come at the cost of maternal functionality in their herds. I'm Bob Cervera.